this is our guest for this evening. And I'm going to share with you how I've gotten to meet Amanda. And um, there she is. And let me tell you how awesome this was. I'll, I want to give you a little introduction to Amanda. Amanda, I even told her with about April, two peas in a pot, smart, brilliant, giving, beautiful, inside and out. Just, you know, those personalities that you meet and there's no guile or deception. There's not that inward motive of the heart that's deceiving or insecure. I'm not saying we don't all have imperfections, but it's so great when you meet women who are strong and determined and don't have time to go do all those other things, to get distracted in those other areas. So, so Amanda, tell us a little bit, tell everybody about where you were in your life um, and why you decided to seek mentorship, but give us uh, an introduction as to where you were, what your faith walk looked like, uh, what was going on that even led you to where you were, you know, opening up all these other doors to the enemy? Yeah. So I, so I basically grew up in a Pentecostal Mountain View Assembly of God. And as a young girl, and I was very much, pretty much became obsessive about reading the word and not talking to people who weren't Christian. And as a little girl, always talking down on other people and judging other people and really making sure I fit that peg pole for the Christian Pentecostal faith. And I think that was the root of everything turning into adulthood, all these issues that I have, um, you know, in adulthood that came to fruition from all of that, because it wasn't just me being on fire for the Lord. It was me being obsessively um, all about the rules in religion. So that was at a young age. I was always in church, always there, but always, I always felt like I was never really free to be a little girl. Um, and this is really the first time that I'm talking publicly about all of this. Uh, so give me grace if I start crying. Um, but, you know, it was basically me in this journey by myself. Um, and then as I, you know, as a young girl, I started getting sick a lot and nobody really knew why. And as I, you know, I got into um, teenage years, I started getting sick more, but I felt fine. You know, I wasn't like chronically ill or anything. Um, and then come to find out, um, I'll kind of skip many, many years, but about, let's see, 2019, I bought a home and I started, I bought a home in Santa Fe. Um, I'm in New Mexico. So I bought a home in Santa Fe for my son to put him in a private school, come to find out the roots of the school were based in new age, um, Mm -hmm. new age philosophy. And while I was in this home, I worked from home at the time. So I started just feeling sick in the house. And mind you, I was never chronic, chronically ill. You know, I got bouts of sickness as a child, a little bit here and there, but I was never chronically ill is what they're calling, you know, that now. So I started getting sick in the house and I noticed every time I would leave and then I would come back, I would start coughing I started getting really bad asthma. I started, you know, and this was a course of between um, a year and a half to two years in this, in this home while my son was at this school. My son was about four at the time, four to five. And um, I started getting worse and worse and worse. And I was going to urgent care ER constantly, probably every day or every other day. I was always there. And it not only, so what basically happened, and I, I didn't know, nobody could figure it out in Western medicine, was I was being affected by black mold. There was mold hidden underneath the floorboards of this home. And I was breathing it in. My, my son was breathing it in. So was I. I was there more. It started affecting my brain, my liver, my balance with my walking uh, sensory issues off the charts. Um, I started having um, autonomic nervous system issues where my heart rate was going up and down, blood pressure up and down. I started noticing uh, weight fluctuations. I started noticing that I couldn't even go into inside a grocery store without having to get out immediately. That fight or flight was at an all-time high. 
something was going on in my body that it was turning, turning against me. And I was getting extremely fearful. And mind you, I was always very fearless, very independent. I always, you know, went after my goals, went after my dreams, very motivated. This pretty much suppressed everything inside of Amanda. I mean, it suppressed my spirit. It suppressed everything about me. And I couldn't even hardly drive from point A to point B without having severe panic attacks and anxiety, brain fog, um, and my skin. My skin actually started turning a gray color. And mind you, I was going in and out of the urgent care and they just, there was nothing they really could do for me because they, they said, oh, everything's fine. You know, environmental illness, we don't know anything about that. So finally I had a dog and this was after seeing tons of specialists, mm -hmm. you know, a PCP and then a lot of different ER doctors. And uh, finally one referred me to the Mayo Clinic in Phoenix. So I went there, um, got diagnosed with POTS, which is an autonomic nervous system disorder. Uh, but there was no root cause. I asked the doctor at that time, which he was one of the top neurologists in the world. And I said, Wow. You know, what is this from? Where did this come from? You know, I didn't go from being active and running all the time and uh, independent and fine to this, you know, all out of the blue. So he said, you know, maybe it was a virus. We don't really know. We don't know. So that was at Mayo Clinic. Wow. Um, I was having problems urinating, pretty much everything. Every It affected everything. Uh, another specialist at the Mayo Clinic wanted to insert this sensor inside my back so I could be able to use a bathroom. Wow. And inside of me, I thought, no, I, I refuse all of this. There is something going on. And at the time, I didn't know it was mold. I had no idea. But I started, you know, I was still very much praying to the Lord, but my life was out of alignment. You know, we had a church that we would go to in Santa Fe. And, you know, all the while my son is at this new age private school. And during this time that I was getting so sick, I was getting extremely convicted of the school, of what was happening there. I would drop him off at a Bible study for kids on Wednesday nights. And I would go do my Kundalini yoga. That's what I was doing. Yeah. And yep. I started getting sicker and sicker and sicker. To the point where I was going anywhere and anywhere, new age doctors, I I was probably taking, oh gosh, I don't know how many different herbal remedies, just taking them, um, just trying to get from day to day. And so during this time, I was begging the Lord, you know, lead me to the reasoning for all of this. Where is this coming from? But all the while, there was this spiritual, spiritual battle going on inside of me. And this was because of New Age. I had, I had let New Age into my life from going from rebellion from the Pentecostal church into a different church um, and then going back to the Pentecostal church. And I had all of this stuff just kind of mixed up in my heart, my mind. And, but I knew, I knew that the Lord was always there and there was something there where he was leading me and guiding me out of this slowly, but it took a lot of time. It took a lot of pride. It took a lot of ego thinking, okay, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure this out. So really the Lord really opened my eyes and finally I figured out that this is mold illness. Um, and I found a naturopath in California. I was on this rigorous protocol for a year and a half, yep. sweating it out of my pores inside of a sauna. And this is gross, but I put a towel down inside the sauna and I get out and it's just black, gray, black, um, just completely getting it out, getting it out. And so I went through this protocol a year and a half. And then from there on, I went to another protocol for parasites. Yep. To this day, I have probably seen, and these are the things that I've seen. I don't even know it's a lot. You know, there's a lot that you can't see, but hundreds, probably clo close to thousands of parasites that I have seen come out of me. And this was all. And I remember the time when I got hit with parasitic symptoms 
And, you know, all this time I'm figuring all this stuff out and really focusing on that, you know, being obsessive about the protocols, being obsessive about the supplements and all the while I feel like, okay, this is taking over my whole life. My mentality, I can't go here anymore. I can't go here anymore. You know, and so it's parasites. Then I find out that, you know, it's Lyme disease, Lyme co-infections, bacteria stuff, heavy metals. So I've been going through years and years of different protocols from, you know, one doctor doctor that knows about mold, one that knows about Lyme, heavy yep. metals. It's just kind of, it's just like a mess. <laughs> but... I have been getting just completely convicted. And when um, Melissa's sister told me about um, the ministry, I I already had it on my heart, you know, that something needed to change because I felt like, okay, I got my son out of this new age school. We were forced to leave out of this home. And mind you, there was so many mold spores that I was breathing. We could have died in that house. I mean, it was really a life or death situation, but we got out in the nick of time and that was all because of the Lord. I mean, there has been miracle after miracle, you know, even, even though I've been fighting for my life and my health, he has been there every single step of the way. Yep. And no matter how weird the things have gotten, he has been there. And so I got my son out of the school. Um, and that was a whole other, other thing. And I remember in Santa Fe, the house, my house was in between a woman on the left side who did all these seances. Yep. And then on the right side yep. was, I call them my, my grandma, my second parents, but uh, they're fully Christian, but they're in the word, you know, and they, they were like the complete polar opposite of this. And it was like this world that I was seeing now, finally, that the Lord brought to my attention, like, okay, Amanda, this is what's going on. There's a battle going on inside of you. And you open those doors. You open those doors out of desperation, out of fear, out of not knowing and not trusting enough to see that the Lord was there all along. Yep. So when I started talking to, talking to Melissa, I just felt like, oh my gosh, I needed to hear all of this. And I was ready to hear all of it. When I first contacted her, I was, uh, I knew what she was saying and it hit hard. Uh, but I was also very prideful mm -hmm. um, and going through my own protocols, what I thought was best. And finally I found the right doctors and um, I just felt like, the time was not then until I called her again this past February. And I said, let's go full force. Um, so I was finally ready. So isn't that an incredible story? <laughs> what else could have gone wrong with her? Huh, Kristen? What else? Right. I know. Right. What else could have gone wrong with her? So fascinating. Don't you think, Gayla? Because think about this. This is very prevalent. That's why you have all these holistic centers. Why do you think you have them? Why do you think you have all these naturopath centers? Why do you think you have all this advertising? Where do you think holistic and nat naturopathic medicine came from? From a need like that. So what was really amazing. So let me tell you, because that's a pretty powerful story. Now, Amanda is still, just so we're all clear, Amanda is still in this fight, which is why I'm going to teach you a scripture and we're going to go a little bit more in depth in it because this is how Amanda's going to get out. So if you said, wow, that's, I'm not in that position like she is, but what if one of these days you are? <clears throat> I'm not speaking that over anybody. I'm saying these are the things that the enemy is going to do. Okay. So we have to be prepared in advance. If Amanda was more prepared in advance, he wouldn't have been able to devour now, what you don't know about Amanda's story is that he didn't just devour her health. He devoured her finances. How much money do you think it costs to go to the Mayo Clinic? How much money do you think it costs to get on all these fancy supplements, regimens, protocols? I've talked to her about this. Let's talk about the tens of thousands of thousands of thousands of thousands of dollars. So what happened with Amanda, because I, I want you all to see this and get it, is her religious upbringing that ritualistic upbringing 
that created a ritualistic system in her life from a, a new age counterfeit Pentecostal church of assemblies of God, because that's a whole other topic. So if you've ever been affiliated with them, that's a whole other topic. You're just seeing one example of many. I've seen people come out of that church mentally ill and terminally, terminally almost at their deathbed coming from that kind of system. So everything she did there, the religious system she did in order to have a relationship with God, she just basically did that in her medical care. So if she's, she, cause she's a good girl, right? Religious, no relationship. But if I do these things, God will love me. I'll feel secure. I'll feel loved. I'll feel like I'm a good Christian. So she thought, well, I'm going to be a good patient. So I'm going to do all these things, all these things. So it was a religious spirit that kept her, that attracted her. It's a familiar spirit. And these familiar spirits come from religious churches, mm -hmm. from churches that are not operating in truth that are not operating by grace, that are not operating by forgiveness and God's love. So she had a familiar spirit follow her, devour her, and then put her under the same kind of system that she was as a little girl with no support. So I wanted you to see that. So the battle strategy that we are using with Amanda is the same battle strategy. It's not a teaching or anything I do specifically, but when I'm working with women or you're coming to these calls, you're learning these things, but God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness in his word, pertaining to life, the abundant life, the vibrant life, the whole life, the healed life. So one of my favorite scriptures and this has to go deep in your heart because a lot of us are shallow hells. We read the word with no understanding. The mm -hmm. devil knows when we have general word. He knows when we're snorkeling and not scuba diving. Snorkelers memorize word and they think they know the word. Scuba divers actually know the depth of that word, how to appropriate that word, how to use that word in order to get the benefit and promise of that word. Mm -hmm. So the scripture we're going to talk about today is James 4, 7. Submit to God, resist the enemy, and he will flee. Well, Amanda in her church going years, really selling out. She had a separated life. She didn't listen to rock and roll. To the average religious spirit, she was a perfect person. She could have told you that she read, did, did everything right, but she was not submitting to God. She was submitting to a religious spirit. See, that scripture says submit to God then you can resist the enemy, then he'll flee. She was submitting to a system. She was submitting to a religion. And that's why she couldn't resist. See? So mm -hmm. we have to go all the way back. There's a story, there's a root of how that happened. These Pentecostal and charismatic movements can actually be more harmful than helpful, especially when they're called movements. I'm already out. I want to be moved by the Holy Spirit, not moved by some counterfeit spirit in some church or religion. So that already is what started it. So when Amanda wants to know the root, when someone comes in for mentorship, I don't say, well, the root is that you have allergies. I want to find out the spiritual roots. How did this thing get in? How was it able to devour her? Well, Amanda is a woman of performance, degreed, educated, smart. So... If I'm the enemy, I'm going to say, oh, I'm just going to have you become disciplined to my devouring of you. Mm -hmm. And that's what she did. She became a disciple of a devouring spirit. Mm -hmm. And she was doing everything so perfectly that the enemy used it against her. The enemy used that against her. Make sense? In other words, the difference real quickly is, you know, I wear this occasionally and I'm supposed to wear it according to what they're saying, but I'll take it out and say, no. Amanda would never have done that because out of fear, she was like, oh my gosh, I'll do everything you say. At 8 a.m. I'll do this, at 12 p.m. And she was like this, out of fear, out of fear, out of fear, right? Because she was trying to take control over that situation. What I do and what she's learning to do, and you're going to hear her, is not to let these things dictate what you do. In fact, with this on, I hear less from the Lord than when I have it out. How's that? Do you know I've been hearing more from the, from the Lord not wearing it? Isn't that crazy? These are little tricks. These are little tips for you on your healing journey. So that scripture, submit to God, to the real God, not a religious God and not a counterfeit God. They're both the same. A religious God is counterfeit. 
And then that one that's being taught that new age God, that new age Jesus, that's another uh, counterfeit God. So when you're submitting to the wrong God, that's why where you go to church is important because church can actually kill you. Mm -hmm. I've seen churches kill people. I've done hundreds of deliverances and I've seen more sick people in the church than I have out in the world. And that shouldn't be the case because we're the city on the hill. Mm -hmm. So you see all these women battling these things because they have not been submitting to the right God. So when someone is coming in for help, we make sure that they are listening to the one true God because he is the way, he is the life. He is the life. He is our life, eternal life and the abundant life here while we're living until we return home to our father. So submit to God, resist the enemy and he will flee. Submit. There are two types of submission and Amanda did both of them. Let me talk to you about two types of submission. Ready? Write this down. Two types of submission that are imperative in the Christian walk. Submission number one, you are submitting to the Father's love. Not trying to love God. In religious organizations, you're trying to love God instead of being loved by God. One is an outward trying to attain. One is the inward of receiving. So if we are not submitting to the Father's love, we get all worked up, spiritually busy, works in the flesh, caught up in works of the flesh to prove that we can be loved for God, that we are entitled to receive God's love. One keeps us very insecure because it's always about doing. It's a doing to become loved by God instead of becoming loved by God so you can do. Mm -hmm. Totally different. So number one, submission, when it says submit, Melissa, explain that word submit. Submit means submitting to the love of the Father over you. Not trying to love God, you can't love God. It's impossible to love God. We are loving God as best as we can, but it says, the Bible says that because he first loved us, now we can learn to love him. So when you are submitting to the Father's love, you are submitting to forgiveness, his grace, his pardon, his redeeming characteristics. You are submitting, which means there's no pride about the sin you've committed. Meaning pride is God can't forgive me of that. That is pride. I've done too much wrong. I'm backsliding. I'm not performing for God. I'm making too many mistakes. Why do I still have these bad habits? That is you trying to perform for God, and that's out of pride. Receiving God's grace is, Lord, help me. I'm still struggling. Lord, I believe you love me. Help me to become delivered. Lord, I believe that your grace is sufficient, and I want to bow and submit to your grace. So you have to be in a constant state of grace, Mm -hmm. submitting to that grace because grace and God's love covers a multitude of sin. That's the Bible. So if you're always nitpicking yourself and trying to perform, not liking yourself, beating yourself up, being hard on yourself, you are not submitting to the Lord. The enemy will use that self-hatred and that self-disgust and self-loathing against you. He will use it against you to disqualify you from God's healing. Guess what? You just disqualified yourself from being healed. Amanda went through a lot of rebellion in her life, sexual rebellion, financial rebellion, all the things she was trying to do to perform, do to perform. So she went through all of that, trying to get better, not trusting God. And when we're not trusting God, it's pride. That sends us into more rebellion. So she was not submitting under the grace and love and forgiveness of the Lord. See what I'm saying? So that is imperative. That is submission number one. Once you do submission number one, you realize that you are fallen. You, are, you have mistakes. You have shortcomings. You have dysfunctions in your personality. You are struggling with habits. Once you realize that, it says that his grace will cover you. Psalm 91 says, he who abides in the shadow of the most high, the shadow is grace, will remain fixed and stable under the shadow of the almighty. So when we are under the umbrella of grace, 
it means that when we are not doing and, and where we're struggling, we can go boldly before the throne of grace and ask God to help us instead of running out to go do our own thing. Submission number one. Submission number one, when you receive the love of the Father for you and towards you, you will then be able to submit through obedience because of the love he has for you. Too many of us are getting taken out by the enemy because we're trying to be obedient to God without understanding God's love for us. It's God's love for us that directs our obedience. And I need you to really understand that we're trying to, that's what Amanda was doing. Let me go to Sunday school. Let me go to church. Let me volunteer. Let me read the word. She was trying to earn God's favor, earn God's favor. And the devil knew that. Like once again, she was a prime target. So in any time you're trying to earn something, you are going to be obedient to who you are bowing to. Mm -hmm. Well, Amanda became obedient to a religious system not to grace. Oh, Amanda should have been obedient under the grace and love of God. And that would have helped her to become obedient because wh whatever you're submitting to, you become like it. If you're submitting to a religious spirit, you're going to become rebellious. If you're whatever spirit you are submitting to, that's who you become. So if Amanda would have understood the love of God, not the performance for God, then Amanda would have been able to yield and hear his still small voice that would have told her, don't buy that house. Don't go to that doctor. Don't submit yourself to Kundalini. But Amanda was under so much perversion. Remember, there's two types of perversion. Not all perversion is sexual. Perversion means anything that deviates from the original intent of God. Because Amanda was submitting to a different God. That was a spirit of perversion. And perversion then started to entangle into all of her life. Remember, perversion doesn't mean sexual. It just means a deviation from the original. So there are two types of submission. So number one for your healing is you must submit to God's love for you, towards you, and over you. That means that no matter what you're going through and no matter what you've done to deserve it. See, the enemy wanted to beat her up. When she came in, she's going through a lot of inner healing in her heart. Because sometimes we believe that we deserve these things to happen. You know, the enemy will remind us of all our sin, of all our shortcomings, of all the perversion, of all the things we've done that we beat ourselves up over. And he will remind us on a regular basis of everything we've done to disqualify ourselves from healing. So there was a program running in Amanda's mind, whether she recognized it or not, that thought, well, I better go take care of myself because... See, so that's what sends us down that wayward road. So there's no possible way that we can submit to God's obedience until we submit to his love first. Submission, anything past that is pride. Anything other than what I just shared is pride. Okay, important. All right, so when we're not fully secure in God's love for and towards us, we will do things to self-protect. Mm -hmm. How many women am I mentoring now that are doing things to self-protect? Well, God hasn't shown up. I remember him from the Pentecostal church. This is Amanda, but I'm independent and I can do these things on my own. And she created this story that the enemy helped her thought by thought, building up a Lego system called a stronghold in her mind to get her to believe that she could be independent. She could figure it out. She's smart. She's capable. There are knowledgeable doctors. And that was an act of pride mm -hmm. because it wasn't going directly to God, but it was, she couldn't because she was already under a spirit of perversion from the religion. So do you see how easy we can get tangled in these things? So when we yield through, through to pride instead of love and trust, this is when we begin to seek his way, our, 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 our own ways mm -hmm. instead of his ways. And this is a self-protective mechanism. I need to be the one to figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'll find the right place. That is pride. So pride is basically our way over his way. There is a scripture that says uh, there is a way that will always seem right to strong women, mm -hmm. but in the end, it will always lead to destruction. If we're strong in ourselves, if we're independent on ourselves, it's always going to lead us down the wrong road. So submit how? It means to be in a continual state of humility so that we can stay submitted to the love of God and our imputed righteousness that the cross already paid for through the blood that Jesus shed. 
You have an imputed righteousness, so the accuser cannot disqualify you from healing no matter what you've done. I don't care if you're a prostitute and if you're a heroin addict and you have needles in your arm. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. You have his imparted, imputed righteousness, which means that I don't care what you've done and what you're doing right now. God wants to heal you. God wants to heal you. It has nothing to do with what you've done. And everything about what he has done for you and on your behalf. Mm -hmm. You don't have to carry your cross of self-disgust. You don't have to carry your cross of self-hatred. You don't have to carry your cross of self-pity. You don't have to carry your cross of self-protection. You can deliver that to the Lord because his yoke is easy. It says, come to me all who are weary, living in dread, living in fear. And I will give you rest and I will give you the answer. So the number one thing to do is submit. You are not disqualified. I don't care what you've done. I've looked at a serial murderer in the eye who told me awful things he did. And I had to look at him and say, you're Christian, right? You have imputed righteousness. Are you ready to be healed? This big old guy tattooed from head to toe cried like a baby. Cried like a baby. Guess what? got free, still has to serve prison, got free in his heart. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. So that's how you submit. Uh, so now we're gonna get to Amanda's second part. When Amanda came in for mentorship, she'll tell you herself, but she waved the red, white flag and she decided to submit. Submitting means, Melissa can't be my way anymore. My way has cost me too much money, too much time, too much of my life, too much of her son's life. Everybody paid the price for this. There's a collateral damage to a lot of people. It brings devastation and ruin to multiple lives. Can you imagine her son, just like me, we have so much in common, seeing her grow up like that and the fear that he has? Oh my gosh, what if I get sick like mom? Oh my gosh, what's, what if something happens to mom? What if mom's no longer around? Who's gonna take care of me? Because Amanda's a single parent. So you can imagine the fear that was, um, given to him that was passed on to her precious son. But that's okay, because as Amanda's getting delivered and healed, those things will just fall off and drop off. So uh, Amanda then came in, and she'll tell you a little bit about that, and she decided to submit to the Lord. Submission was part of mentorship. When she did, she was basically saying, I'm not going to do it my way anymore. I need help. Here's the white flag, Right. That's what she was basically doing. She was saying, I need help, but I need spiritual help. I've gone to too many doctors. I've gone to the best in the world. They can't help me. God, I'm trusting you, but I still need help. That's what mentorship does. It, it allows you to submit to godly counsel so that we can help you out of uh, the attack. All right. So Amanda, when you came to mentorship, you said, I'm ready to submit. And you did. Um, I told you some pretty amazing things that were not harsh. One of the things about Amanda that makes mentorship work and that makes your healing easy is submitting to truth. You're not submitting to me. I have nothing to offer you. But when you submit to God's word and the word is being spoken out by someone that you can trust, that you can work with, that there's the anointing there. The anointing on, is on God's word. And mm -hmm. just being spoken by somebody. But I challenged Amanda to do a lot of things because she was totally entrenched. What Amanda did is she set up an altar called her health. And she was feeding that altar with tens of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. She was feeding this altar several different ways. When we get to resist, you're gonna see a completely new Amanda. So how do you feel feed an altar? An altar is anything that takes precedence in our life. Anything that takes priority in our life. An altar can be a health issue. An altar can be your husband. An altar can be your marriage. An altar can be wanting to be used by God in ministry. An altar can look any way it wants. For her, it was an altar of her identity found in her health, rooted in her health. So Amanda had built up this altar. It was built fear by fear, concern, dread, worry. Oh my gosh, they can't figure out what's going on. Can you imagine how big this altar was that was ruling over her life? And then she was feeding the altar by going to all of these different doctors, tens of bunches of them, you've heard just a few. So she was actually feeding them with her money. She was feeding them by opening up her mind to what they were saying, to the advice they were giving her. 
So she was just intaking all of this information, sometimes cross information, confusing information, conflicting information, but she was feeding with her money. And any altar you're feeding, if you're feeding an altar like that, gets very, very big because we are, it's self-worship. Mm -hmm. What Amanda didn't realize is that she was in self-worship. And self-worship isn't what we think. Self-worship is anything we are doing regarding self that takes up our entire life. So believe it or not, that's what she was actually doing. And then the devil had the audacity to devour her health, and then he made her pay for it. Isn't that just like the devil? Hey, I'm going to make you sick, and then I'm going to make you pay me to get better. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how he works. She was also feeding her altar through words, things that she was saying. Amanda was an expert on everything she was going through. She was a Lyme's expert. She was a parasitical infection expert. In fact, she was such an expert that she had friends and other people that she loved coming to her for help saying, hey, can you help me? Because you're the health expert. So she was feeding out information, trying to help these women. Been, I've been there and done that. I used to be the expert on health supplements. I knew everything about them inside and out. So she was that medical expert. And instead of leading women to the Lord, See, she was leading them to doctors. She was leading them to protocols and modalities. So you can imagine now how the altar grows. That's why this is going to be such an amazing story. Can you imagine when she shares her story on this? Can you imagine how many women she's going to help go free? So Amanda, when you decided to submit, and I fully wonder what would happen after, I said all hell's going to broke loose. What did that look like for you? And was it difficult? Oh, yes, it was very, very difficult. First off, I was already ready to submit everything. I think because of the years of conviction and the years of the knowledge that I had, you know, all the knowledge that I had gained was becoming an idol to me. And this idol, like Melissa was saying, I was feeding it every day. Oh, I need to take this for this, this for this, this for this. And I know exactly what's going to work for my body. I know exactly what it's going to do. I know my body intuitively. Now I do. You know, all this stuff that I had grown to be like, okay, I know all of this. I'm not fearful anymore because I have all this information with me. But that fear was still there because of all of that information. Um, because I was laying down to that information and laying down to all the specific uh, root cause details of the physical health but I really needed to lay down the root causes of why I was so obsessed with this now. Why was it this now? Why was it something back then? This just took the place of something else back then. So I think when Melissa said, okay, well, you're going to have to really, you know, put God first instead of submitting to all this perverted stuff of your knowledge and the supplements and these doctors and yada, yada, yada. So I did do that and it was very, very hard for me because I'm very hard headed and strong headed. Uh, but yeah, it was very hard for me to say, OK, I'm not going to put so much emphasis on this herb or this protocol or this doctor. This doctor doesn't know what he's talking about, but this one does. So I'm going to get this little bit from him or this, you know, it was a constant mental battle that I have had to lay down significantly. And when you try to pull the strings away from what has built up this altar, yep. um, it falls and it, you know, you do go through tremendous attacks. You do. Um, I've had attacks from my mom, from my brother, fam family attacks. I've had attacks financially. I've spent thousands of dollars on everything. Um, thousands of dollars out of pocket because nothing is nothing like this is covered with insurance so you know i i submitted fruits my my money was a form of fruit that i was laying down to um so yeah i really had to take a full look out of my whole life and just kind of look as a, as an observer and say okay amanda why 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 and let's push that aside and let's put Christ first and let him fill your heart, your mind, and not be so obsessive. Lay down this obsessiveness. Lay down the fear. So all of this has taken a while 
to to do. You know, I've had to lay down pride. I've had to lay down my ego and a lot of uh, basically control? bondage. How about control? Control. How control, about control, the bondage. About yeah. It has formed this tremendous amount of bondage. All the while, I think I'm getting better. But yeah, it's being used against me mm -hmm. significantly. So isn't that amazing? Yeah, there, yeah, I mean, it's wild. But now I can see it for what it is. Yep. And looking in from the outside, there's so many women that are in the same boat as me. And they are in that fight or flight. They're going from doctor to doctor. Oh, Amanda, what do you think of this doctor? What do you think? And so now I'm kind of looking at them as me. Okay, that was Amanda. I can see how fearful I was. And I really didn't submit my all to Christ, even though I was, you know, a walking Christian, I didn't submit my all to him. So now it's been a 360 mental shift mm -hmm. of, okay, you know, if I have to take this to whatever, it's not going to be my priority in life. Yeah. My priority in life is submitted my, submitting my all to Christ yes. and submitting my mental thoughts over to him. Because all day long was thinking, oh, okay, well, I can't go there because of this, or I can't do this because yep. of this. Um, that has formed this web of lies that I have fed myself over and over just to survive from day to day. But letting that go, I have just felt this tremendous, tremendous freedom. And Melissa has been spot on with everything that I needed to hear um, and everything that the Lord has really convicted me of. That's, a, that's so amazing. Amanda is so easy to work with because, and I love working with her, like I do all the women that come through the mentorship program because I get to pick and choose who I work with. That's the kind of attitude you need. She's not submitting to me. She's submitting to God's word and she's submitting to relationship with God and getting out of religion. Amanda really needs to, to be delivered and healed from religion, not from limes. The religion is what led her up to that. Amanda's being healed and her relationship with God, her trust in God, God's love for her, that is being restored. Her heart needed healing. Sometimes when we have things that are in the heart or things that are in the mind, those are conducive environments for attacks from the enemy. So Amanda's been amazing. And every time we talk, she writes it down, takes notes, says, wow, that's amazing. But she has to come into agreement with it. You know, I'm only here like as a coach to help. But everybody is responsible for their own walk. And a lot of women will not do exactly what Amanda's doing. I challenge her. I said, get rid of all these doctors. I didn't just give her frou-frou stuff. She gave me a list of 20 doctors. And I said, the Lord is going to challenge you to start getting rid of them one by one. When I first told her that, she was in fear because they were her, I, they, she, there was idolatry. So mm -hmm. it was difficult for her. But guess what? She started to do it. And every time a doctor, she would get something off of her plate, she'd receive healing. There was a trip that she was taking with her son and she was worried about being able to take it because she didn't want to go on this drive in case some health issue because the devil's bombarding her. Remember, ladies, every single day, there's something different going on. Just because she started in this mentorship and just because she started submitting to relationship with God, there is a time process, seed, time and harvest. She's receiving the seed. Now there's some time. And God is rewiring her and renewing her and showing her that she can trust him. And that takes time. And it doesn't take God's time. It's our time because we don't want to let go. God could do a quick work in all of us if we just let go and yield it and submitted to his way. Because his ways will always lead us to green pastures. So we have to understand the, the way the enemy works. And I wanted to cover this tonight, but I'm not. But let's real co cover real quickly the word devil. Because this is who is after Amanda, and this is who's a lot who's after you and I. If we're here together on the Zoom, you are remnant, you are chosen, you have been set apart and called for a specific plan for the uh, for the Lord. This is who this ministry attracts: strong women who are really ready to fully sell out and commit their way to His way. So really look at yourself. You heard April's story. If you're here, you're here because you're seeking this. You've been floundering in church. You've been going from conference to conference and you still are struggling or things not are not, are not as good as they can be. So this is because you have an enemy who's a devourer who's come to still kill and destroy. And he's going to do everything relentlessly until he gets his goal met. 
So let's talk about the word, the devil real quickly. The devil is a compound of two words, dia and balo, D-I-A, B-A-L-L-O. The word dia has many meanings depending on how it's used. However, in the particular case of the word, the devil, it means through. It actually means through. As to pierce something through from one side all the way through the other side. So I want you to imagine all those movies that you see in those on those old times, uh, Renaissance days when they used to fight with swords. So imagine getting some, uh, uh, imagine getting a weapon and the violent spirit of murder that that person would have to have and the strength they'd have to have, not just to stab them, but to stab them with such anger and hatred that their weapon goes all the way through, pierces from one side all the way through another side. So that's what that word means. The word balo means to throw, as when a person throws a ball, a rock, or some other object. When these two words are joined together, diem balo, it means to repetitiously throw something, striking again and again and again until the object being struck has finally been completely penetrated and annihilated. So I want you to get a picture of the devil. He wakes up in that mood every single day. So he comes to assault the mind with arrows. Arrows go into the mind, not once, but many, many times a day. There is an actual condition. It's called chronic negative thinking. It creates a lot of fear. It creates a lot of hysteria, creates a lot of paranoia, creates a lot of anxiety. It's very important to guard our minds. So he deliberately will strike the mind over and over again, the emotions over and over again. That's what he was doing with Amanda. Mm -hmm. As Amanda's trying to submit, he was already doing it before. So he had a lot of real estate in her mind. He was actually manipulating her mind. He was actually in possession of her mind because there's a lot of mental illness that happens when you're in a huge battle like she was. So he actually had legal territory over her mind, helping her make those decisions. So he could make her even more and more sick and even more and more dependent on the idols. That's what idolatry does best. So he's piercing her mind. Oh my gosh, I'm more sick. Emotions, what do I do now? So she was living in that constant state of fight or flight. Fight or flight is an attack of the emotions in the mind. If you are in fight or flight, it's your mind and emotions that are warring and wearing you down. That's the exact definition of fight or flight. Then he kept striking her until he wore down her resistance. She was the one being assaulted, but he kept striking, striking, blow after blow. This led to infirmities, more infirmities, more pain, more idolatry, more symptoms, more unexplained illness, etc. This then causes the victim, Amanda. Amanda was a victim of his warfare. So what it caused her to do is let down her mental guard, thus letting down her resistance. So mentally, she was just overwhelmed, inundated, and she just let down her resistance. Resistance means she was not making good decisions. She was not discerning what to do. See, resistance is, there's no discernment. So now while this was happening, she was just getting worn out. You can imagine, and hopeless. Imagine hopeless. The Bible says that hope deferred makes the body sick. You're going from one doctor, they don't have the answer. You're hopeless, you're discouraged, and it's making you even more sick. Hopelessness has legal right to make you sick. Discouragement has legal right to make you sick. Disappointment has legal right to make you sick. So while the, uh, while the uh, Amanda, the victim, was actually worn out, the enemy relentlessly continued to attack her, to attack her nonstop, ferociously. He is a lion that ferociously walks around seeking to devour. In other words, the enemy hadn't killed her yet, and he was enjoying watching her bleed out very slow. So he began to penetrate more of her mind, her body, her soul. Then once he gained complete access into those three areas, he already had her body, through her mind, through her heart, through her soul, he had complete access. And now he's fighting at a completely different level. So as Amanda continued to listen to the lies, the diagnosis, the doctors, the protocols, coming into submission to those things, the devil was able to build a stronghold in her entire life. And that is what he used to control and manipulate her. That's exactly what sickness looks like. Make sense? And then he makes sure that you look at your life, your past life, your sins, your failures, 
And then he reminds you while you're in pain, while you're down for the count, while you're being struck, blow for blow, he has a sword, he's piercing into you every single way. And he's ripping you apart, shredding you to pieces. Then he says, oh yeah, guess what? And God's not going to heal you because remember that time you fornicated? Remember that time you did this? Remember that time you did that? And all of that makes you even more sick. You buy into those lies. Then you believe you even need to pay for it, et cetera. And then that the devil has even more and more rights. So you just have to understand he's relentless. So it's time for you to resist the enemy. That's the second part of the scripture. What does resist mean? We have to go to our anchor scripture in 2 Corinthians 10, 5. I'm going to pull it up in a second. But resist is a Greek word. It comes from the Greek word, which is a compound word of two words I'm not going to mention. But the first word, anti, this is what resist means. The word anti means against. It means to oppose something radically, to oppose something drastically. The second part of the word is to me means to stand. So when you get those two words, to stand and to oppose, that's what the word means. Resist means to stand and oppose. But if the devil has you on a sick bed laying down and a hospital bed laying down, how can you stand? You know, you stand in your spirit. Your spirit rises up. You stand in your spirit. This is not a physical stand. It is a spiritual stand. It is a postural stand. Is it a positional stand? And you stand in your spirit. That means even if you're laying flat down in a hospice room, you have the ability to resist and to stand and to oppose. That is what is going to be required because the enemy got you to lay down. That's an enemy. That's exactly what happens when you are defeated by an enemy is he has you on the ground. The hospital bed would be an example of that as an infirmity. So the definition of that word resist demonstrates the attitude you and I are supposed to have when we are fiercely opposed to something. You are fiercely opposed to what the enemy is doing to you. You are so fiercely opposed to it that you're going to decide to do everything possible in your spirit, man, with God's power to resist it, to stand against it, to defy its operation in your life. The enemy is going to attack your marriage, your health, your finances. That's what he does. He likes doing three things at the same time. If he can infiltrate one area, he has full reign into other areas in your life. He infiltrated her health. He had legal right into her finances. So then he starts to bleed in and go into the entirety of our life. So resist simply means to withstand, to oppose, to fight aggressively against, with teeth clenched against the enemy until he flees. Ladies, until he flees. Not resist a little bit and then go back to your doctor. This is an example of me resisting. How am I resisting? Because I'm not wearing this 24 seven, even though it's under his instruction. I'm gonna wear it as I want. He's not gonna tell me how to wear it. I'm resisting. If I just obeyed and wore this 24 seven, the enemy would know that I don't believe that I'm going to be healed and he would use this against me. He would use this to accuse me. So when I'm resisting, I'm giving you an example. I'm saying, no, I'm not wearing that today. I'm not wearing that during the call. I'm not wearing it for the next seven hours. So this is an example of resisting. Resisting doesn't mean turn your back on, ignore, forget, get lazy, hope somebody else is going to do it for you, or shutting your eyes closed, crossing your fingers, hoping that the enemy is going to leave you alone. He has swords, they're ready, they're primed, they're pointy, they're sharp, and he has them ready to go right into your finances, right into your health, and right into your marriage. If you are submitted to God in your positional righteousness, and you know that no matter what you've done, what you did yesterday, and what you're probably going to do tomorrow, that is going to, the enemy is going to try to use it to disqualify you. If you do not say, I'm righteous, and it has nothing to do with what I'm going to do, what I've done, or what I might do, it has to do with my imputed righteousness that comes from the blood of Jesus, and I'm going to oppose you through the imputed righteousness of Jesus. I'm opposing you through the blood. I'm opposing you through the victory on the cross. I'm not opposing you in my own strength. I'm opposing you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's how you're getting my opposition. So you can look at me all you want, enemy. You can annihilate me. You can try to accuse me, but I'm going to oppose you because I'm uh, created in righteousness and I'm wearing a garment of righteousness. And this is my imputed position in Jesus Christ. So bring it on.
Bring on the accusation. Bring on the lie. Try to bring on the torment in my soul. I know who I am. It is imputed righteousness and the blood did it for me. I don't have to do it on my own. I don't have to do it in my own strength and I'm not going to do it by works. Mm -hmm. That's how you resist the enemy. Do you hear that fight? This is what I'm teaching Amanda to do. It's a fight. Clenched teeth. We're too nice to the enemy. And he has these swords and he's putting them in our life in every area of our life. So our victory comes from the fact that it is already won. We are not trying to go get a victory. Gosh, I hope I'm victorious. We are going towards the victory that we already have. Hey, that victory is mine. I'm taking ownership of it. I'm not trying to become victorious. I am victorious in Christ. And that victory is mine. And when we're talking about sickness, especially Amanda's type, uh, I teach women that this is the way you have to talk and fight. The devil loves passivity. Well, Melissa, why are you screaming? Because your devil is using a tongue of fire. You have to fight weapon to weapon. You don't fight nice with a devourer. If a murderer comes in my house, I'm going to scream, kick him out, call him out, get a gun, call 911. I don't let him just come in to devour and try to work it out nicely. Well, you know, can you please leave my house? Can you please leave my body? Can you please leave my health? You know, can you please quit devouring my finances? That is not the way you fight in war. Sometimes we forget that we are fighting in a war and that we are wrestling, wrestling with an enemy who is a very good opponent. One of the things Amanda had to do is understand that she was fighting a real enemy spiritually and she had to uh, quit exalting every lofty thought and vain imagination and control that she had that was exalting itself as an altar above her living God. Amanda was exalting vain imaginations. She was exalting thoughts. She was exalting all of these things. And they were resisting her being healed. That is in 2 Corinthians. So mm -hmm. it is time to resist. You're no longer a sucker. Come on, ladies. You don't have to take the bait. There's a deadly hook inside that. And the hook is to pull you in, draw you in the devil's net and turn you into meat so he can devour you. So that is resist. So we're going to talk about how Amanda's resisting and then how the devil is eventually going to flee. And we're going to wrap up in about the next uh, 10 minutes. All right. So let me just tell you real quickly, I'm teaching Amanda to submit and resist at the same time. It's not one first than the other. It's spinning two plates at the same time. She's submitting to God's goodness so she can resist the enemy. If she submits to sin, submits to religion, submits to protocols, she cannot resist. She's fighting with two hands tied behind her back. Submitting and resisting is the same thing. I'm righteous, I'm forgiven, I'm loved, I'm under grace, and therefore I command you out of my body. I command pain out of my body. You are not gonna push pain. You are not gonna bully me with pain. You are not gonna intimidate with me with pain. I am fully forgiven, fully loved, and fully righteous in Jesus' name. And I command you out of my life. Now the devil knows if you believe that or not. So he's going to start to push more. He's going to say, oh, yeah, she's getting a little strong and a little too big for her britches. Let me show her what I got. And he started doing that. And he started pushing pain. She'd go through these attacks. She'd call me and say, Melissa, you're right. Man, the attack's up. He's relentless. But guess what? She was standing her ground. You know why? Because she finally had truth. Mm -hmm. She finally had truth and she was finally willing to be obedient to God because she had submitted to his goodness. She had seen it all her life and she said, I'm submitted to your way. So your one, two punch is submit, resist, resist, submit. Every single day you are in a battle. You are submitting. God, you are good. You are faithful. Your promises are yes and amen. You're not a man that you should lie. Every promise is, is uh, for me. This is not my portion. Financial devastation is not my portion. Health issues are not my portion. So you submit to that and then you resist. And then you submit again and then you resist. And these are your two hands. Submit to God's goodness and resist the enemy. And if you know that and it is deep within your heart, the enemy will eventually flee. He's not gonna flee that easy. He has not left Amanda's life, but Amanda is on her way out. She is on her way out and she will tell you that herself. So 
I warned Amanda early on, I said, a disobedient or unsubmissive believer will not see victory. Amanda has had to submit many areas of her life, but she's been willing to do it. She's had to submit her finances. She's had to submit her son. I told her that sometimes our kids can be idols to us because we're so worried about them because we're going through some things. And mm -hmm. it sounds like a good thing to do as a parent, but it's not, it's another idol. So Amanda had to submit all of her life, her child, her money, her job, the fact that she's looking for another house uh, to live in. So she had to submit everything to the Lord in order to be obedient. She had to say, Lord, every altar I built, every idol I've created, I submit those to you right now. And she's done that beautifully. And that's why she is seeing victory. All right, Amanda, as we, we're coming to an end, um, I want you to share what your walkthrough mentorship has been like. In other words, share really um, for a few minutes um, after you started learning these truths and submitting yourself to these truths, what your daily life has been looking like in regards to doctors, protocols, attacks, and the continuation of your healing journey. So I will say that now, I'm not, for every symptom, I'm not running to the doctor. I'm not running immediately to him, to her, to the internet. I'm not running to the, those idols that I made in my life, in my mind. I'm not having that fire drill of saying, uh oh, something's happening. I better go to this health support group or I better go uh, call my doctor. <laughs> Uh, it was getting obsessive. And so I'm not doing that anymore, which is a big thing for me to let that go. I'm gaining more clarity in uh, my thoughts and taking hold and taking the Lord or having the Lord take hold of my thoughts. When I get into those fear based thoughts of how am I, how am I going to get from point A to point B? So I'm having him completely First and foremost, uh, in my walk, well, I'm having, I'm putting him first in my walk. <laughs> uh, I'm putting him first as I start my morning. Lord, I'm giving this day to you. I'm giving anything that happens with my body to you. You lead me, you guide me. I'm not going to go straight to my cycles of fear. I'm not going to go down that path anymore. So basically, I feel more equipped to fight off intrusive intrusive thoughts, yes. um, demonic attacks, because they're happening constantly. Um, and it, it may not be my thoughts, but it's family things going on. It's, uh, you know, issues that have been really keeping me in bondage. So that's what I'm really doing every single day. So instead of going and doing my usual, I'm really putting him at the first and foremost foundation of everything that I'm doing. So basically Amanda is giving you an example of repenting. She was going this way. Now she's going that way. That is true repentance. That is true repentance. Repentance isn't, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Repentance meant, means I was going here. Now I'm going here. I was going to this doctor. Now I'm going to the great physician. This is a perfect godly example of true repentance leading into fruits of righteousness. Now, in closing, because we're only five more minutes, one of the things that Amanda has been really great with Amanda is she allows me to correct her quickly. When you're with mentorship, there's been times where she'll call me and say, hey, Melissa, and she tells me all about the disease, the sickness, the illness. She knows yeah. everything. It's like listening to Google or Alexa. I mean, she is Google. She's a Google expert. I'm like, my goodness. And I'll have to say, oh, no, wrong. Stop. No. Because mm -hmm. your words will feed into that attack. Your words will be used against you in a court of law. Mm -hmm. And you are in a court of law with the accuser. So I've had to many times and ask her and she receives it. Here's what's great. She'll be telling me all about her symptoms. This was early on when we first started. Oh, this was black and this was green and this was gooey and this was pussy and this was, and she'd tell me all these things and I'd stop her and I'd say, oh, stop right there. What has God done? What has God done? And I'd have to rewire her because Amanda, wasn't it true that your words were being used against you and feeding into that? Yeah, yeah it was constant. I was talking about it all the time. With everybody. I mean, basically, if I would start a conversation, it would be about my horrific experience with mold or, you know, how's your health? 
I can help you. You know, it's just, it was constant. So now it's really refraining myself from talking about it so much and giving that the glory and building that up because that's what was happening. Basically. I mean, that was pretty much my whole life just talking about it and being about it. I really fit that mold. Literally. (laughs) No pun intended. (laughs) No, no pun intended. That's hysterical. Uh, Okay. Amanda, in closing, uh, and I just want to, I'm going to let her close with you, but a scripture that the Lord gave me is from John 10, seven, Jesus says, I'm reading it. I am the door. Jesus is saying he is the door, not a door. Amanda exchanged going through all the wrong doors called doctor's doors. And now she's walking through his door because his door is the only thing that can heal her. Doctors do well. They do great. I'm not against doctors. I like doctors. I think doctors are great. They are doing everything they can with the wisdom that they have, but they are not spiritual experts. And there is a spiritual cause to everything. The the entire world was created spiritually first and then manifested in the carnal nature as the way we see the world. But everything is spiritual. Everything. I didn't say everything is demonic, but a lot is demonic, but everything is spiritual and has its roots in our walk with the Lord. So now Amanda's chosen a completely different door. And now she is seeing God being so incredibly faithful to her. And I gave her a word when she first started and you'll, you'll, you're going to see it yourself. Just like with April, I gave her a word and I said, Amanda, if you just are as coachable as you are pretty, and as, as coachable as you are educated, you are going to be in and out of this very quickly. In other words, I told her and promised her the Lord was going to do a very quick work in her life. And he is. And mark my words, she's going to be out of this. And you are going to hear the entirety of her testimony. So anyway, we're going to end there. Uh, and then I want final thoughts from Amanda. Amanda, if you were talking to someone and look, look, ladies, don't look at Amanda or anybody and say, wow, poor thing. I want you to think that this could be you and the devil wants to make it you. He wants to make it you. April was not sick when I when we first were working together. Guess what? April has submitted to God and guess what the devil did? Because the devil's no respecter of person like God is no respecter of person. Mm-hmm. April was April according to her walk with the Lord was the least likely candidate which made her the most likely candidate. When she submitted to the Lord, the enemy said, I hate that because I know what she's going to do for the Lord. And I know the plans he has for her, but I have plans for her too. So don't be thinking, wow, poor girls, poor women. Oh my gosh, thank goodness that hasn't happened to me. You should be saying, I'm not going to allow that to happen to me. Don't be thinking that it ain't going to happen. See, that's pride. Submission is saying, I'm prepared for if it, if it happens, I'm prepared. I'm not getting prepared. I'm staying prepared. So Amanda, going forward and in closing, what would you like to tell all of these women uh, in closing to your story? Anything that you'd like to share to inspire them, to encourage them? And then we will close in a real quick prayer. So first off, I just want to give the Lord the glory because there is no way that I would be here if it wasn't for him. I mean... Oh, wow. I mean, there's so many things that I could talk and talk and talk about that he really has delivered me from, from way back then. So I really understand now that the Lord guides us within our life if we're ready to take heed and listen. So there's so many distractions in this world. And, you know, whether that be with sickness or, you know, money, jobs, technology, all this stuff. It's made for us to get away from the Lord. Yes. And our foundation should always be Christ first and everything else. You know, he leads and he guides. And, you know, if you're going through something similar with environmental illness or things that are really weird that really nobody can help you with, uh, and then you're in that fight or flight mode, that fight or flight is meant to get you back to Christ. Um, and get your heart back and your focus on him. You know, I, I've gone through a lot of 
limbic system retraining, nervous system healing, but none of it has been successful until I submitted my all to Christ. There's all this science that backs up everything that I talk about all the time. But, you know, the foundation of science is Christ. All of it, that is all from the Lord. And all of it is trying to take him out of all of it. Yes. So I will say he is the one that is the foundation of everything. But we have to be so careful not to make these things idols and not to make these things of the world focus, the sickness, the symptoms. And it's hard to do. But, you know, we can overcome everything because greater is he who is in us than he who is in mold or lime or heavy metal, or cancer, whatever you're going through. Uh, so that is all I have to say about that. <laughs> I could go on and on, but. And she will. <laughs> the Lord has a, a, a beautiful calling on her life. So, wow. Wasn't that awesome? Why don't you go ahead and give a shout out to Amanda in the chat? Let her know what you thought about her story. Encourage your sister in Christ. Let her know. I mean, this is awesome. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story to, for her to be so vulnerable. The Bible says, as we close, confess your sins to one another and you will be healed and delivered. Sin is not fornication. Sin is doubt, hopelessness, idolatry, fear, not trusting God. How about those? Those are sins. Mm -hmm. Sin is not what you think it is. We have sins of the mind, sins of the heart, sins of the soul. It says when you confess those things, you become healed and delivered. So I want to tell you how inspired I am, how much fun it's been, how amazing it's been. I meet her again tomorrow. I'm so jazzed. I look forward to it. It's been awesome. We have a blast. We enjoy. I mean, it's a fun process. So I just want to thank her very, very much for being real. She told me earlier, I haven't really shared this with anybody. And you know what? I told her there's tremendous healing and anointing coming from what she shared. There are, I want all of us to be brave enough, to be open enough, because this is where true healing comes and the Lord respects that. And he's going to honor her vulnerability and her openness tonight with continued healing and deliverance.